Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Text Messages on the Parasite of the Show, Rick Tex. We're broadcasting out of Elk River, Minnesota, part of the deep north. Uh, temperature's pretty cold today. Got got a high in about the teens, maybe low 20s, and that, that's Fahrenheit. So definitely, you want your wool socks on, your wool underpants, your wool undershirt, your ski mask, your not really the insulated coveralls, but definitely a pretty big jacket. And of course, your mittens or whatever the case may be. Maybe some snowboarding goggles. Sometimes you gotta attack the prom without guns blazing. So we're, we're glad to be back once again. We had to take a minor hiatus. See what had happened about a week ago. I had, I, there's this blanket warmer here. So the blanket warmer is set to automatically turn off after three hours. So what I was gonna do is I was gonna go into it, program the chip, you know, assuming it wasn't cold protected, which it probably was, and then program it to 10 hours. So what had happened, I opened it up, it had the in-circuit serial programmer, figured hey this looks simple enough, so plug it in and plug it into the USB on the computer, all of a sudden the, the programmer attachment fries, the computer shuts off. So basically it was mostly a disaster of epic proportions but, but what we're gonna do, well what I had to do then was replace the motherboard and fortunately all you know, the past text messages, episodes, and everything else that's important is still on there. So we're, we're not we're not serving hard times just yet. I mean, if we went to Cobb County, Georgia, we probably would be. But for the most part, it was definitely a, a minor interruption. But, I mean, life's a war. Every day is a battle. So we're just going to keep charging on and moving forward, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, that's usually what happens when the producers have me working on technical stuff. Like, if, if they would have just had somebody more competent and used the enormous budget here to have somebody else work on it, probably wouldn't have been a problem, but to have me work on it, you're basically asking for disaster, and maybe even inviting disaster or encouraging it, possibly even a total disaster. But, I mean, a motherboard, 100 bucks, that programmer that got fried, 50 bucks, so 150 bucks, you know, that's not really that much in the scheme of things. The biggest part was, was just the time that, that we lost filming episodes of text messages because I wanted to, it was very critical to film that urgent message. Actually, it was an emergency message about clean water. Not, not so much clean water, but mineral rich water. You know, water with magnesium, calcium, iron, all that other crap in the ground that, that's supposed to be healthy for it. Along with rainwater too. Because rainwater has the nitrates, the oxygen, and anything else that the Mother Nature can stir up there in the heavens and the skies above through the clouds and everything. So, so I, I mean, healthy water is something that everybody needs to have access to. It's not so much a want or a desire, it's certainly a need. Especially if you want to perform at an optimal level as far as, you know, thinking, acting, being physical, uh, being spiritual contributing at work, contributing to society, contributing to social circles, considering to contributing to animal loving and all that stuff too. I mean, you gotta have healthy water. Animals gotta have healthy water too. They don't want to be drinking fecal infested water. They want good clean water that, that maybe comes from a spring or it comes from the sky. Seems like they prefer the sky though. Well, one of the things that you have to do, especially with hens, is add a little bit of, well, you know, maybe you don't necessarily have to do it, but it's highly recommended that you add a little bit of apple cider vinegar and we're talking about the good apple cider vinegar. When you buy apple cider vinegar, if you, if you look at the bottom of it and there's no solids forming, that tells you that it's absent of the mother or maybe it's pasteurized or maybe it's not quite raw or, or something. It's been adulterated. So when you buy apple cider vinegar, you need to grab the bottom and look at the bottom of it. And if you see any liquids, the, the solids on the bottom, then you know it's probably good and you got to shake it up pretty hard to get it to, you know, where it's no longer solid of solids on the bottom where it all gets integrated into the rest of the liquid. That's when you know you got good quality apple cider vinegar. And, and believe it or not, Walmart actually sells the pretty high quality organic apple cider vinegar based on what I've seen. And it also works great for making bone broth. Just mix up some water and apple cider vinegar, then throw in some vegetables, maybe carrots, onions, celery, peas, then maybe some kind of ginger root, turmeric, radish, horseradish. And then of course throw in chicken bone, turkey bone, pheasant bone, whatever the case, beef bones, any kind of bones that are you know good and responsibly obtained. Um, that doesn't mean just find some dead raccoon on the side of the road and, and harvest their bones. And you generally you want an animal that's been humanely executed and 
you know, disinfected and all that stuff too and in a controlled and clean environment. Uh, roadkill definitely doesn't qualify for that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that roadkill is a complete loss because dead animals usually have lots of vital nutrients for the ground. You know, their bones got the phosphorus and all that good fun, manganese, magnesium, calcium, silicone, all that stuff. The ground wants it, it loves it, the plants love it too. So, I mean, if you do find roadkill and it's convenient enough and, you know, you're not going to grab it with bare hands and then rub your hands all over your face, yeah, I mean, you may as well just maybe pick up some roadkill and bury it in your garden, your compost pile, you know, fairly deep so that you don't dig it up or anything like that. And then all the nutrients in the animal can then fester into the soil, too, and, and make your soil great again. Plus, you know, it is respectful to give an animal its proper burial. Uh, Cutting off its head and throwing it in a ditch is not necessarily a proper burial. I mean, if you do find roadkill, it is honorable to, you know, give give it its proper burial. That doesn't mean you need to have an hour-long ceremony and sing songs of hymn and praise and encomiums and all that stuff and, you know, have an epitaph for it. But yeah, just showing decent respect for a living creature that happened to meet an unfortunate fate. Yes, I mean, that creature has a family, too. It had a mom, a, a dad, a, maybe it's got brothers and sisters, cousins, uncles, nieces, nephews, sons, daughters, whatever the grandkids, whatever the case may be. You know, the animal, it's got other living entities that are emotionally attached to it as well. So, not only does providing a proper burial ceremony for an animal just feel like the right thing to do, it also benefits your soil. And you're going to have better plants, more strong plants, they're going to have all the vital nutrients in it. And you know, whatever bacteria enjoys it as well. Now, you get a dead animal and just toss it on a compost pile and all of a sudden you get maggots and everything, it's going to be a bit of a mess. I mean, it'll take a long time for it to decompose and break down to where there's not dangerous bacteria all over it. In fact, there probably will be dangerous bacteria over it a long time, but for the most part, just, yeah, it's, a, it's just a good idea to handle stuff and to, to use common sense as far, as far as that goes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, getting back to the apple cider vinegar, now, apple cider vinegar gets pretty highly praised. You know, apparently, you can pretty much use it for everything. If, you, if your skin is dry, pour vinegar on it. If you're, It has amino acids in it that are good for you if you want to make your body strong. It has things that are good for your hair and everything like that. And they're good for digestion and they create ketones in your body. But, I mean, it's just important to, to utilize it in a moderately controlled sit, uh, environment because... If you look at all the health claims of apple cider vinegar, you'd think like, well, you know, I should probably whack down half a bottle every single day. But I mean, I always enjoy things in moderation. See, apple cider vinegar and bone broth, you know, that's just fine because you, you know, you might eat the soup every other day that you cook with, you know, throw some vegetables in and cook the regular bone broth in and maybe some other meats too. So, I mean, yeah, you get a healthy serving of apple cider vinegar and probably drinking a little bit raw helps too. I mean, it, it's probably more a placebo effect than anything. The acids too apparently aren't very good for your teeth, like it will rot away your teeth enamel, so if you just pour it in your mouth and leave it there and swish it around for a while, it will erode some of your enamel and react with, with the, you know, the calcium or silicone on, on your, the surface of your teeth. So it is important to keep that in mind too, ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of things that are healthy, they're healthy when, when done properly. So what that means is if you, um, say for example you have water. Now, water with the right minerals in it is healthy, but if you get water with, with fluoride and bleach and chlorine and, you know, blue cooking oil or blue Drano, it's not going to be very healthy for you. In fact, it'll be very dangerous, and it's probably not something that you want to consume or even have on your skin, which is why it's important to have clean laundry detergent. One of the things that I noticed is our society's idea of clean is usually putting dangerous VOC chemicals or just toxic poisonous chemicals all over your clothes and your hair and your skin. Which I mean, you may be able to fool people for a little bit, but in all reality, I mean, you don't really need to wash clothes every day. Maybe, maybe once a week or so. And it's important to use clean laundry detergent as well. Just stuff that's hopefully as closely as naturally derived as possible. Now a lot of times you'll see companies that will advertise naturally derived plant-based ingredients and some of them may be nonsense, some of them may not be, but at least if you're buying the products, you're telling the manufacturer that you do prefer plant-based ingredients. You're, you are actually paying attention. You do care about your own health, your family's health, uh, 
with the health of your appliances and the health of your clothes and the health of your skin and all that good fun stuff. Because I notice a lot of times, right after, immediately after washing clothes, even using a plant-based laundry detergent, typically I get somewhat irritated sinus, sinuses and everything because, you know, you can definitely smell the detergent. It's emitting some gases and all that, so it's, it, it's not a very healthy thing. Now, sure, yeah, maybe it cleared off some dead skin cells or cleared away some bacteria or dirt or you know, viruses or fungus or human papillomy virus and all that stuff too, but... In all reality, it, it it sounds great on paper. You know, it sounds like you can just throw things into a laundry appliance and a clothes washer and let it spin around and, and your clothes are clean. Feels like something you don't have to think about beyond that. But I mean, in all reality, you pretty much it, it is a good idea and a good practice to always consider what it is you're doing. And as far as clothes go, too, different color clothes have different variations of dyes on them. Because typically when you buy a clothes that's made of cotton, cotton is naturally white. So if you want a healthy shirt that has the least amount of dyes on it, it's probably the best idea to get, to get a white shirt. Now polyester, wool, that's a different ball. Wool, I mean, depending on the sheep, wool is you know mostly a white or a light brownish color or somewhere in that ballpark. But I mean, there could be black sheep and all that stuff too. Brown, yellow, green, gray, purple. So... And one of the problems with, with clothes manufacturing is they don't have to say what type of artificial dyes they put into the material. All it says is it's made off of cotton and wool, or cotton and polyester, or spandex, nylon, whatever the case may be, Raytheon, Z, Zylon, or whatever these new materials are. So usually the newer the material, the less it's been tested for health effects. So I generally try to stay away from new products, both products that you put on your body and into your body. And we've definitely had that problem with the uh, the food industry because what happened is companies wanted to find replacements for sugar or a sweetener. So they'd come up with all this stuff like aspartame, sucralose, high fructose corn syrup, low fructose corn syrup, middle fructose corn syrup. And what we tended to find out was that a lot of those ingredients were, even though with the exception of the corn syrup, they were low calorie or no calorie, whatever the case may be. But they always managed to deposit in certain parts of your body that, that they shouldn't be in. Or MSG, monosodium glutamate, that happens to be a, um, a neurological stimulator or mimicker. So it, it, it gets in your brain and it causes some inflammatory properties up there as well. And it definitely causes some problems that most people don't want to deal with. So if you see MSG or aspartame, sucralose on an ingredient list, it's, it's probably best to avoid it. Now, does that mean consume and drink everything with sugar in it? Not so much. It's just the best idea to avoid all that stuff in general. Um, it's not really... I mean, sugar has been around for hundreds of years, and yeah, it's naturally grown in some corn or cane, cane sugar, for example. Yeah, it's naturally grown, so you may think, well, if it comes out of the ground, it must be healthy. But one of the problems is that we have with our food supply is that Sugar in its natural form is usually implemented with high fiber or you know fat or maybe to some degree protein. So for example, when oranges were first around, yeah, they still had sugar, glucose in them or whatever, but they also had a good amount of fiber in them and to some degree a bit of protein and fats. Not much though. But what, what we've done is we've continued to modify the foods over and over and over again to get the, like apples for example, there's hundreds of varieties of apples. And if you go to the, whatever, U of M plantation, they'll have hundreds of apples trying to grow. And one of the things that they're growing for is hardiness in different climates. But the other thing they go for is taste, texture, tartiness, sweetness, all that. So what ends up happening is over time, they develop these apples that just have piles and piles of sugar in them and not much fiber. So we've adulterated these items and evolved their DNA so much. I mean, not... Yeah, there have been artificial GMO injections that change plants and all that too. But I'm talking about just growing plants and uh, splicing, well, not, not so much splicing DNA. That, that's a, another product of, of uh, GMO. But, but just growing plants and ch switching up the varieties and everything and seeing what happens. And, you know, mating one plant to another or putting the branch on one branch. So, by and large... Our, our fruits, even though, yeah, stuff is still growing out of the ground, it's highly different than what it used to be. 
Now, uh, so you could argue that some of that is beneficial too. I mean, an original banana, if you look at original banana, it's basically all seeds and there wasn't much edible portions to it. Nowadays, it seems like barring the peel, pretty much the entire banana is edible. Now, does that mean it's healthy for you? Maybe, maybe not, but it's probably healthier than eating an artificial, you know, soylent green candy bar or something that's just packed with, with sugars and probably volatile organic compounds. So it, it's just a great idea to try to pay attention to that kind of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean, when you grow your own fruit and vegetables too, you know, assuming you're not spraying it with, with uh, herbicides, pesticides, synthetic fertilizers and all that stuff too, that it's going to be a healthier fruit. I mean, companies that grow apples and everything and oranges, there are probably a lot of passionate growers and all that, but by and large, their company, their whole objective is to make a profit, so they need to make sure the plant is preserved on the shelf and preserved on the branch too. So oftentimes that means killing all the, the pesticides or pestilence and killing all the bugs and insects too, so it involves lots of spraying in, in, in the case of apples, for example. One of the roots, one of the ideas that a lot of people follow is to buy foods that are that have peels on them, like an orange, for example, or a banana, so that you can remove the peel and then eat the fruit. But what ends up happening is a lot of these herbicides and whatever fungicides they get into the roots. The roots, see, the tree has a bit of a filter, so it is probably to minimize your risk, it is probably a good idea to eat fruit with the peel on it because then there's just more of a filtration device. It'd be like, say for example, you want to take vitamin B. Now you can either eat foods with it or inject it. And it's probably a better idea to eat foods with it because if you inject it and you get a dirty supply or whatever, then it may cause some really horrible side effects. So it's always a good idea to utilize the filtration devices in, in your body. And in the plants too, it's also a pretty good idea as well. But of course, I mean, the best thing to do, obviously you can't plant oranges, lemon, limes, or avocados here. So yeah, I mean, to buy them, you know, they got the peel on, now that's one line of defense. But, but even so, there's always going to, there's always going to be some questionable ingredients that get inside of it. So it's never really such a bad idea to buy organic. I mean, yeah, it costs more money, but you're supporting a good industry, a clean industry, an industry that's willing to jump over a few hurdles to ensure the health of the population. See, even though they do have an objective to make a profit and they may just be organic so that they can, because they can't compete with the commercial growers, growers so they want to find a niche market. But I mean, you know, that's great. You know, they could either be doing that or robbing people on the street. So the fact that they're growing oranges in an organic setting just means that they're trying to live an honest life and making themselves great again and everything too. So it's just, it's just very important to, to consider those things and who you're supporting, what you're supporting and why you're supporting them. Because it seems like any, any time I try to cut corners in life and don't take enough time to research something or want to be cheap on something that really shouldn't be cheap on or not pay any attention to some thing that I'm plugging into my USB port, it usually ends up to come back to bite you. And especially with your health. And if, you, if you've seen the price of healthcare lately, it's certainly not anything to, to scoff at. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the conclusion of the show. Uh, we didn't we didn't have any news articles today, which um, a bit unfortunate. But, but by and large, you know, we always have plenty of material to talk about, plenty of vital, important material for making your health great again too. And you know, maybe someday we'll introduce a new show or new characters or whatever the case may be. So by and large, the the, the future looks pretty good. And yeah, we did end up inadvertently taking a few days off there maybe up to a week but hopefully you got their urgent message about magnesium calcium iron and getting healthy water and all that too and yeah, I mean if you live in a city yeah I mean I, I personally I'd probably get a bunch of bottled water test that out see which one is the healthiest which company which brand where it comes from and and then just stick with that bottled water because if you live in some confident apartment in Minneapolis yeah you're not it's going to be pretty impractical to find someone with well water or to... So if you filter your own city water, yeah, you get the garbage out, but you're not really getting the good trace minerals that you get out of the ground. So it probably would be a good idea to consider foods that would also have that, that uh, those, those, those minerals as well. Because your body does not synthesize minerals. That's something you got to get out of the ground or out of the sky or whatever, wherever it comes from. And that's how you're going to make yourself great again.
So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I thank you for watching and viewing. We salute you in the war against bad health. And until next time, peace out.